the pleasure of meeting you, uh, well, only physically and by way of ear. Last year I was at your concert, and I was shocked because you were shocked that a lot of the people here knew your song. Well, the very first time you play in a place where English is not the first language, you go in. I, I go into every concert not believing, even a show that I know is sold out. I go in thinking there's nobody's going to be here, nobody's going to like this, because it makes me give more. So I, it's not that I was shocked. I just, I play mind games with myself constantly. Okay. Well, then I, I apologize to Holland. <laughs> <laughs> because I gave them sort of the impression that well, you let him know you didn't it is, know. It is, it is a surprise because you don't know. I'm not here with anyone when they take the shrink wrap off the CD and they start listening. You just see numbers. People are represented by the numbers of people that have the album. But you don't know. Are they really listening? Did they listen to number seven? I'm playing number seven and I did... So you st you've been to play, you're like, and you get to the chorus, you're like, and they start singing, like, yeah, you know, but you just, you never know. Do you have that feeling now because you know that they know that you have returned home? Uh, I still have that same feeling because the new records come out and we're playing some of the new songs, so I guess we'll kind of see. But of course, I'm not an idiot. We're going to play all the songs that they want to hear from the other records, but... It's a new show. This is the only the, the fifth show that we're playing these these songs this way. And uh, I will always I'll always feel this way about it. I, the minute you go into a show thinking, man, I got this, it's gonna be a disaster. So I, I try to keep everybody on their toes, on their on uh, everybody's walking on eggshells because we want to give a great show. We want, we don't want anyone thinking that they you know, people pay a lot of money to come see you. And they spend their time, they may have to wait an hour or two to see you, you know, we want the opening, the, not the opening, the other acts to be as, as, as good as well. So they have an, an entire evening of something that's really good. Well, let me tell you, relax, exhale, because I've been in Europe for a couple of years now. And once they love you, you can do no wrong. <laughs> really, you can do no wrong. But longevity, you have longevity. And I'm sure that it's a lot of us, like, I can't play your records too often because I would have a lot more kids running around. But in this game of, of you know, the synthesizers and all this fancy kind of music, you still stay true to that butter music. And so what's your secret? Like, I read somewhere that you say you don't want to compete with people like Chris Brown. You're not out to do that. So what's your secret to just keeping it for people like myself who like to rock, you know? You have to still believe there are people out there that are like you. And when you show up tonight and you see a whole building filled with people, you realize there are a lot of people out there that want to hear this type of music. And there's lots of people that want to hear other music as well. And it's not that I'm not competing against them. We're all in the same field. But there's so many people out there. There's really no way to, you know, they're not going to take mine. I'm not going to take theirs. And a lot of people like lots of different types of music. So I'm competing against me. I've had some pretty successful records. And now I've got to come behind those records with other records. And uh, I can't really think of it in those terms. I just want to be here. I'm still here. I've been in this business almost 20 years, still selling out shows. And everything's cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really appreciate that and admire that. And I wrote down some notes because my program is Inspirational Grooves, and I love to give homage to those who are uh, doing stuff more than just I want to sex you up. So I love your song with Fred Hammond, who is coming to Holland June the 11th with Ty Tribbett. Absolutely wonderful. And I know your roots is from the gospel side of it. So you, are you going to give us another complete, because there was Bethlehem, are you going to give us another complete gospel album, please? Oh, I don't know. Because Bethlehem was a Christmas album, yeah. and it had, it had a, a lot of different varying themes on the, on the Christmas theme. But in order for me to do a complete gospel album, I'd have to make my life right. Oh. You know, I, I, it's not something that you can halfway and even though nobody's perfect, it's just for me. There are things about me right now that how can I tell those stories when I, I'm not completely on that path I need to be on. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. I have my crutches. You know, I, that, I was not I was going to say something really funny that would not be in good taste. Really However, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've thought about it, and there, there may be something. I, I would really love to do a live thing with all of my favorite gospel acts and make that a live record kind of thing. And we've ta I've talked to some of them with Fred and yeah. Marvin Winans and Take Six, obviously, to do something like that. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll, see. Well, we'll be waiting for it. Now, I have, well, I do have a lot more questions, but I know you press for time. Medea. 
I, Tyler Perry, we talk about him a lot. And so you had a chance to, to have a song on there, which is absolutely beautiful. How was that experience for you? Well, that was the beginning of that was cool. Uh, I had had a relationship with Tyler for a while. He asked me to be on that soundtrack, and I had a song that was ready turned into a big hit for me and then I actually scored Daddy's Little Girls too. I'm not sure if that movie's here yet but uh, he asked me to score his next two pictures so I scored that one and I'm on to scoring the, the next one as well so it's uh, it, a lot of doors continue to open and you know I always believe if you if you continue to do good work then things will, will happen for you and it continues to happen. Well you planted that seed years ago so we know that everything is going to blossom. It could be purple green but it's going to blossom. And so one last thing. I'm working on a project now called Spiritual Lullabies and it's a program where songs that soothe your heart and feed your soul. And so growing up we had little songs that made you feel good you know like mine was Pass Me Not. Not your conventional you know lullaby but what was your favorite lullaby? And so I'm putting you on the spot. If you could just sing just a little bit of it for us. I have no idea. Because mm. There's so many songs, and so, uh, that's okay, a tough one. Grew up in the church choir, and, and so what was your favorite song from there? You have to at least have one that you hummed every now and then. Uh, my grandfather used to direct this. My grandfather was a minister of music in our church, and my family, we, we would do these concerts all over. And um, one of the songs that uh, everyone would, would request was My Heart's Prayer, and it goes... My new life I owe to thee, Jesus, Lamb of Calvary, sin was cast upon the tree. Jesus, blessed Jesus. <laughs> Thank you so much. A success tonight. Thank you. Brian McKnight. Mm. Yeah. I don't know you. I don't know you either. <laughs> <laughs> but we get to know each other that way. So, um, well, <laughs> to the left, to the left. <laughs> I hope we got that because I'm going to use it. within your plan.